So I'm on. Perfect. Uh, I'm just going to take a small picture of you guys. So could you please smile? Thanks. Perfect. Okay. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about reports. Uh, I'm Klaus um, Lodström. And the people who have been in my session know that I love to do a lot of uh, slides. So uh, of course, I have around 800 slides that we have to go through. Uh, but the first one is this one here. It's actually my second slide. I have eight slides. So uh, that's the only thing I have. Uh, I'm Klaus. Uh, I, uh, yeah, this is, uh, I know a little bit about the reports. I'm an MVP. Uh, I used to work for Microsoft for many years ago. I stopped there about three years ago. Uh, and uh, I was actually one of the guys that was uh, killing the classic reports. OK? So um, yes, <coughs> I was not really, uh, yeah, um, there was not really a decision I was really happy about. Uh, and, uh, but on the other hand, uh, we, we needed to move on. Uh, and it was a decision from high over that we had to use either CB ports. And either CB ports, of course, supports everything. <coughs> yes. Um, so uh, we, in 2009, of course, uh, created the, the possibility to run classic V ports in 2009. Okay, Summer Klaus, I know a lot about reports, uh, now I said it, uh, and I've done uh, a lot of uh, trainings, and I actually think I've been training over 900 people in the channel now, so if you're sitting here in, in the audience and you've been at my training, you probably shouldn't be sitting here, you should probably go over to the other session, but uh, that's up to you if you want to have a repeat. Uh, I'm uh, from Continue, so I'm not going to uh, do any advertisement about this, but these are the products that we, uh, that we are going international with, and enough about that. So. Next slide. You ready? As I don't like slides, I want to show the product. So, uh, so let's do that. So, just want to uh, just one, just to get some feeling of where you are. So, uh, so how many people are still on NAV two and the classic reports? Okay. And out of you guys are still on classic reports, have you done any investigation in the, to, into the RDLC for reports, or is this your first session? If this is your first session, hands up. Uh, you know about RDC reports. Okay, so if, uh, one person, okay. Okay, you're gonna be busy. Uh, so you need to know these reports. Uh, um, okay, who is on 2016? Okay, great, so a lot of advanced people also, great, perfect. Okay, so let's, uh, let's do a uh, small demo about these reports and I'd like to show, uh, tell you about groupings. Oops, let's get out of this PowerPoint. It away. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to jump right into it, and I'm going to jump into the object designer, which we all love. I'm not going to do all that much development on stage, but I will, but uh, let's see. So I've done one uh, little report here, and it's not that uh, exciting report, but it, uh, it creates a, uh, it's a data item, and it has a few uh, fields on this, uh, on this data item. So I have the customer, and uh, what I want to, uh, for this uh, report, I actually just want to run this report here. What I always teach in my class, this is a three days class. Uh, some, some people think they can do it in one day. That's a little bit optimistic. Uh, but uh, two days, then, then your hair would be like this. Uh, and uh, so usually three days is a good, uh, is a good uh, time for doing, uh, getting your hands uh, uh, dirty and understanding the reap, all the RDLC uh, issues that we have. Because we have a lot of issues, unfortunately. Visual Studio is not a bug-free program, unfortunately. Uh, and I have gone through uh, some of the bugs and tried to get them fixed, but uh, none of them are getting fixed. So there's always a workaround. Okay, so that's why I probably said this last year also. If you ever come with a, a service request to Microsoft, don't ever tell them there's a workaround. Let them figure that one out themselves. Uh, because if they see workaround where they're going through all these bugs, uh, they, will, uh, they will just say, oh, that is a workaround, we'll not fix this. Okay, so never tell them that and you won't get your box fixed. So that's just a small tip for you. So uh, what I, uh, what's important when you, when you work with other CV reports, I, I see a lot of people just open up the reports and open up Visual Studio. I also see people using Report Builder. Well, don't use Report Builder. It's a, a very uh, minimum tool that we really can't can use for, for nothing other than changing colors and, 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 and deleting stuff. But um, so I don't use Reaper Builder. If anybody calls me and they, ah, Klaus, can we do a team viewer? Uh, I'd like to have some help uh, with this report here. And I'm moving up uh, the team viewer and they present Reaper Builder for me. I go in the top and I right corner, corner, I click and I say, yeah, call me when you're serious. Okay? So Reaper Builder is not something that we work with. 
Okay? So what is important for these reports here is that we need to understand the data set. So people go into the Visual Studio and they start attacking the report from there. And they think that they can then solve the report. And maybe sometimes they're lucky that they solve the report. And if they do, they sometimes end up in this situation that ah, it's working, don't touch it, don't touch it anymore. And they walk away from this report, don't touch it anymore. Anybody in that situation? Yeah, a few people. Yeah, so you have a lot of reports in your system that you don't touch anymore because you don't dare. Uh, yes, so I suggest that the first thing you do is you go and look at your data set. So to do this, we're going to go preview. And we I see this report is completely blank. I don't have anything in this because it's not, it's not the layout that's important right now. It's the, it's the data set. So I'm going to open up the data set. This page is running mold. So I'm going to close it immediately. And I'm going to go to Excel. Here in Excel, I can see my columns that I have created in my data set. In in, me, in the object designer. So go back to the object designer here. You see that I have co two columns, a customer number and a customer name. Go back, and here in Excel, I have a customer number and a customer name. Pretty simple. You probably all know this. Uh, but I'm going to make it a little bit more advanced. So now, what I have here is it's just a customer. Uh, let's just, can yeah, just cancel this. I don't want to see this anymore. Let's go away. If we go and open up the uh, designer for this, open up Visual Studio, I am working in this scenario. I thought of just should I do this on two, uh, 2016 and 2015, and I was like, yeah, I could do that, but why? Uh, there's nothing ha happened to the RDLC uh, since or RDL since he could show 2008 R2. Okay, nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing. Okay, so we have uh, we we have a product that has been created by Microsoft. It's nobody is doing anything with it right now. So I might be very unpopular saying this, but nobody's doing anything. That's, they released it in SQL Server 2008 R2. SQL Server 2008 R2. So that's 2010, they released that, and nothing has happened since then. Nothing. Okay, so there's no wonder why when you come with a, uh, with a bug to them, they have no idea how to solve this because they don't have anybody working on it. So uh, that's really great. Uh, so this is a, uh, so, so I can live long on this uh, because I know a lot about these reports. I, can, I, can, I don't have to, to, to get into any new, new things around this because I can teach this for years. Uh, so Microsoft will not go away with other C reports. They will not do that, okay? It's been a lot of hassle for them upgrading uh, to these reports here. And if they change it, uh, I think it all partners will kill them, okay? So it's not gonna change. And our RDLC, of course, has some limitations. But it also has a lot of great things. Um, so, so let's just uh, have a look at this report here. So what I'll do now is I insert a, a table. And in this table here, what I do is that I put in a few colors. I always use colors. Always. Of course not when I hand this and I, uh, I'm final with my report, I don't do this. Okay. So of course I'm going to hand it to the customer, I don't I remove all the colors. Because if I did not do the colors, so let's just do it without the colors. So, like this, save, go back, save and compile, and we run. And I look at my report, hopefully it's coming up. Ah, it's running modal, uh, so it's opened up another session. Let's, I'm sometimes doing that. Don't want that, go away, run it again, control R. So preview, and uh, now I'm looking at the report. Now I have borders on the report, but I guess if I did not have borders on the report, I really couldn't see that I had anything on this report. Unless, of course, I put something there. But let's have a look. Uh, go back to the, uh, to the uh, report designer here. And we'll take the uh, color. So we line this. And let's take, actually, we're going to do this. So just undo the things that I that's it. And save. And go back. And I know this is a very simple scenario. It will be harder later, I promise you. Preview. So you see what happened there? I did not change, and I was really fast when I ran the report. So when that happens, uh, I could sit and scratch my head. I don't understand why. I actually fixed the report. It's not working. I don't understand that. So I go back to Visual Studio, and then I change it, change it and, and I actually break it. And then when I come back uh, to the NV, I do really fast again. And then actually I'm running the, the old version of the report, which I actually fixed. And if I now run the report, uh, uh, then I say, oh, I'm now happy it's now fixed. But I actually broke it. Okay, 
So be careful when you run your report, just wait a couple of seconds before you run it, because if I run this again, it will be the correct version. So preview, and I have colors, okay? So be, hold your horses uh, just for a couple of seconds before you run. So now I can see that I have a uh, table header, I can see that I have a, uh, and all my detail rows, and all the, the hot pink ones here is, is going through my, uh, my data set, and here in my data set I have 68 uh, customers in my database, which is uh, here W1 uh, demo database. We all know this, I assume. So this was a very, very simple scenario. So let's go and close down this one here. I want to go and look at this report. And this is a little bit more complicated. So, yeah, I, I don't really like cameras, but uh, okay. <laughs> no, that's okay. So, so please take a, a picture of me when I'm not looking because, uh, okay. So here I have a, um, I have a data item, uh, the customer data item, and then I have a, uh, the sales lines uh, indented underneath here. So really uh, also very simple, and this is where it gets interesting to create a report because I'm using multiple tables. If I had, if I'd done a, a report on the other, uh, the, the other table with the customer list, I could have really just created a page. Uh, I really didn't need to do a report, unless of course you wanted, you wanted some uh, hot pink colors, uh, so, but that's, that's of course up to you if you do that. Okay, so let's have a look at this data set. So I'll run this data set again. And now it's opening up, and, and if I then go and preview, and again, this report is completely empty, and then I go to help, I go about this report, and I go to Excel, and I close down this one. It's running modal, so it's taking complete uh, control of my session, so I don't want that. So here I have the, uh, the, the data set I have here um, from uh, from the report. So I have my customer, which is the parent for the sales lines. And here I see that I don't have any uh, sales lines for the first uh, couple of customers uh, and the customers right after the uh, new concept furniture. So I'm going to get rid of that. So let's just clean that up in the data set so I don't see that. I do that by going to the customer. And if you, you all know this also, I hope, go into print only detail and say to yes. And when you have done this, uh, it would only show uh, the customer if it has sales lines. So pretty basic uh, in a way. So run it again. I'm just going to take some break. So I'm going to preview. And in here, I'm going to go into help about this report. And again, I'm going to have a look at the data set. And now I've cleaned up so I don't get any customers that don't have any, uh, any sales lines. So the interesting here is that my data set is now being flattened. Uh, and what, is, what does that mean? Well, that means that if you can notice here the customer here, these, uh, these customers here is uh, now uh, shown here three times. But actually over here, you can see that there's actually three different sales lines that I have here. So on the... Uh, on the uh, left side here, I have the, the customer columns and I have the uh, sales line comments. I also have a format column over here uh, that, uh, that I really didn't create. And this is coming automatically. If you put a decimal in your data set, then this decimal will be, uh, uh, you will get the format uh, transferred over in your data set. You have no way of getting rid of that. That's just there. Okay, so this is our data set. Great. So now we know that every time that it runs through the, uh, the customer and it goes through the sales lines for this customer, the customer is being repeated. Okay? So we also see this here. So for, for sale and going, uh, the customer uh, 20,000, it's being repeated 13 times because there's 13 lines in the uh, sales lines uh, uh, table that is related to this customer. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and look at the grouping now because how is that, how is I going to group that over in Visual Studio? So let's go back here, go to the designer, and uh, I'm going to put in a, uh, a table. And I'm gonna, what I want here is that I want to have uh, my uh, customer shown, and then the customer underneath the customer, I want to see uh, each of the sales lines. So what I'm going to do now is just going to insert a uh, just a table. And uh, then I want to uh, start 
doing some grouping here. The grouping window is down here. This window here. When you do groupings, I always work in this area. So it's really best practice to work in this area. You want to do row groups, then there's uh, the, uh, this part here, and if you don't want to do column groups, in on, it's on the right side. Column groups, we don't do that often. Uh, if you are in this, this scenario, if you want to do column groups, you are more probably in a BI scenario, and you probably want to do some BI stuff uh, instead of doing a static RDLC report. So from my point of view, the RDLC reports is really something that we use for document reports. While it's a little bit strange that Microsoft then is releasing a, a document report as a word, uh, which in my eyes we really can't use for anything because we cannot do any conditional things. So let's fix that. We can do that, well then we can start using Word. Uh, so for a partner's point of view, Word is not really an option, uh, as I see it. For an end user, uh, maybe, but not for us partners, because we always want to do something generic. We want to have a report that can work for this and this and this and this customer. We don't want to create a report for each of these people. So Word reports, in my eyes, uh, if you completely disagree, disagree with me, come down afterwards, uh, and then we can talk about this. Okay, so I'm going to put this in, and I'm going to put uh, the uh, go into groups here, go into details, and I'm going to add a group. And here I have a, the possibility to do a parent, a child, an adjacent before, and adjacent after. Everybody knows what adjacent means? Hands up, who knows what adjacent means? Okay, there's only a few people, so adjacent means that pe when things are completely on top of each other, okay? Right after each other, so it's adjacent. So, let's do a parent group here. I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna group on the, uh, on the customer number. So, right now I won't see anything here, and the reason for this is that this uh, table here, has, or haptics, has not been, uh, has not been uh, linked to the data set. So data set name is not filled in here. I could go and fill it in here if I wanted to, but I could also, if I wanted to, I could also go here and just type the number of customer and then I see the property of the, ta the tablet again and then I get it. Okay, but I really I don't want to put anything in my report here, so let's get rid of this. And I want to go down to the, uh, to the details, add group, parent group, and I click here. Now it is linked to the data set so it knows what, what, what we, can, we can use here. About the data set is that we only have one data set, so we don't have the possibility here of doing multiple data sets. It would be a great feature uh, if we could have that. Uh, so if Microsoft is listening, it would be great. You put in number customer, and if you, uh, then you uh, decide if you want to do a group header or a group footer. If you don't understand what this is all about, you always check mark these. Okay? We can always get rid of them afterwards. So let's just check mark these, say okay. And then uh, this tool is creating uh, a vertical text box here to the left. Uh, and uh, from a BI point of view, that's really nice. Uh, maybe for, for a document report, that's not something we might uh, want to use. We could use it, but uh, let's just delete this. In this case, yeah, I'm not going to use it. So delete, go away. So now I have a report I'm looking at, uh, and that's, uh, uh, and I actually have uh, now completed the report. Okay, this is where people are struggling. So let's save this, and let's run the report. And go back, go back, and run. Yes, preview. So now the report is done. Can you all see it's done? No, exactly you cannot, because I have not been using any colors. So you're just looking at a blank page with a lot of, uh, a lot of rows here, and you don't know that, it's, that it's actually, this is actually working. So again, help yourself, do some colors. So let's go in here. Let's, uh, this row here we really don't need, so let's just delete this. And actually we could use it later, so let's just keep it in. Um, so we're gonna do some colors here. So let's take uh, green and uh, let's take this blue here and then we'll take some orange maybe, if there's an orange, yes. And I always have to have hot pink. Uh, I, I, I can't stop that. I'm sorry. Hot pink. I don't know why it's called hot pink, but it's uh, in Excel it's a magneta, but in here in our tool it's hot pink. So it's really great. Uh, so we have a hot pink in the end. Great. <coughs> yeah, I, I didn't say that out loud, but okay. Uh, we now will go back. And now uh, notice that I did not put any 
any data on this report here. I'm just working on the groups on the data set, building up my report. So if you're struggling with the report and you sit there, oh my god, this groupings, I don't really understand this. Uh, why, how is this happening? So what is your best friend? Colors. Ho yeah, hot pink, exactly. <laughs> exactly, hot pink is your friend, yes. You might want to use other colors also, but uh, yes. Thanks for that one. Uh, who said that? I said, there's a t-shirt for that one. Uh, yeah, well, who? Uh, yeah, okay, so I'll, I'll run up. So I do this really fast. I'm old, man. All right. Here you go. So I can, I can do like uh, Steve Ballmer, run around, and I can developers, developers, developers. And then you're standing in 10 minutes like, <sighs> I can't speak. Have you seen this video? I'm not going to show you that video. Uh, so, okay. So let's, uh, let's go and have a look at the report. Uh, I did it again. Sorry. Just, I don't want two sessions running. Let's run it. So now I can see that I just added colors to my report now. So now I can see that at the top row that I have the green one, that was my table header. If I click here, I can see the table header. Then I can see this line that I have here starting and ending. And in the middle here, I have the detail row. The detail row will go through your data set. If you, it's outside of a group, it's just a detail row, it will go through your whole data set, whole data set. If it's inside a group, it will run in your group, what you have, all the lines that you have in that group. And I have now grouped it on the customer number. And if we go back, let's see, let's see if I put this to the left, and we're going to take this one and put it to the right. This one to the right. Ah, that's a little bit too optimistic. I'm not going to do that. Small screen. So let's just switch between. So this is a, this is a group header. This is a detail row, and this is a group, uh, group footer. So for every group, I get a group header. Then I get all the lines, and now then I get a group footer. If we look in the Excel, I can see that for customer 10,000, I have three lines, these three lines. And if I go over and look at my report, let's uh, maximize this. This is group number three. So it started here, the group header, all my lines, and the group footer. So my report is working now. It's just a matter of me adding in the information that needs to go there. People, people get confused about this and start thinking that Visual Studio will automatically find out the groupings of what the data that you put up there in, in, up in, the, in the body section. It does not work like that. So what I could, I could, for example here, I would put in the number of customer or the name of the customer, but I could also put the name of the customer uh, here, for example, that would be uh, that would be wrong for me to do. But probably when you've been playing around with these uh, these reports here, this is a scenario that you've been in, and you're wondering why it's working like this. But the report is really working. You're just placing it incorrectly. So preview. So now I'll just get all my customers shown there because that's what's in my data set for these rows that has been created there. So you need to put in the right data, of course. You all understand this? Somebody saying no? Okay, nobody dares to say no, okay. Should be quite simple. I hope you, you, you follow me. So what I'll do now is of course I go back to Visual Studio and I do this, of course, the correct way. So I put in here the, uh, the customer number, put in the customer name, and here I put in the, uh, let's put in the sales number. Uh, here I want to put in the description, and here I want to put in the amount. I really don't want these captions right now, so let's get rid of these. No save, go back, save and compile. 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, run. And then I'll preview my report, and now my report is done. So the foundation of my report was done down in the group. Is this too basic? Yes? Yes? Okay. What do you want to hear about? More groups. Yes?
do you want me to tell you about how you should create your document reports and not the way that the standard reports are done? Yes, okay, let me do that then. We have about an hour left. I have a plane at five o'clock from Brussels, so I might leave five minutes before uh, the session ends. So just aware of that, if you have any questions, I would like to have the questions during the session and not afterwards, because I will be running out the door at three o'clock, okay? So uh, let's, let's have a look at that. So let's close down this. Uh, by the way, I actually wanted to show something also here before we actually do that. Do you want to see uh, how I do sums uh, of the uh, the amounts and uh, how do I, I, I use the, these amounts uh, from the from the group itself and the, from the tablets and the overall data set and, and show these groups inside the groups and all that? Do you want to see that? You want to see, see that? Okay, so let's finish that. Then I'll just do that then first. It just takes a few minutes to do. It's really easy because I'm going to go down here and it's in the group. I'll put in the amount. And really, uh, I'm just going to go summarize by sum, boom. And let's just bold this one here. Let's bold, boom. Save and compile. And oops, go back to an EE. Yeah, it was broken in EE, but this is the uh, development environment. Compile, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, run. And so now preview. Now I have the amount there uh, of, the, of the group. So really not that interesting for the third part here, first uh, group, but more interesting for this one here because there's a lot more numbers here. So that's a group. Uh, I could also also do that, let's say, put that in the top. So I could go here, and I say, let's do uh, the sum also here. Uh, boom, 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 and then just, uh, let's just select it, boom. Summarize by sum, boom, then I also have the, uh, the group sum here. But what about adding a new, uh, new row here? So insert a row to the right. And what I want to do now is actually want to have the sum of everything. Can I do that? People are almost quiet. So yes, you can. Just go, just go into the expression. And in the expression here, you have the possibility to give a scope, okay? So what I have, sorry, I have to sum first, of course. So summarize by sum, boom. And then in the expression, boom. And in here, I want to give this a, uh, uh, a a scope. So I have to define the scope here. So I say comma, and then I say dot, dot. Not like that, sorry, uh, like this, two quotes. And then I give it the scope. Right now, I have the scope. It's all written down here for me, data set results. I'll put that in, data set results. And you have to be very specific, otherwise this will not work. So data set results, put that in. So now I have that. You've probably been wondering about these expressions. Everybody loves these expressions that you don't have, uh, you have the possibility to see what's in there, right? Do you know how to fix this? You just double click, give it a name, and you write here and let's say overall total. So you helped your uh, fellow colleagues that's coming after you. So now it says overall total instead of expression. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's just have a look at that. That's the overall total, so save and compile. Go back to NV to do. I need to speed up because you wanted to see the other part also. So now I have the the overall total. This is uh, this part here, the total of the group in the top and the total of the group in the bottom also. Oh, so could I have? Uh, what if I uh, wanted to have the uh, total of the group inside the row also? Could I also have that? Well, you could also do that. So you can always look up but not down, of course. So we're gonna go here, let's put in the amount. And here, I'm gonna go, uh, click the field again, boom, boom, summarize by sum. I'm gonna go into the expression, and here in the expression, I'm gonna give it a scope. So what's the scope I'm gonna give it here? It is the scope of the group, and the group is called no customer, or number customer. So. You say yes to this. Again, you get this nice little expression. Double click it, get into the placeholder properties, put a label, and then we just call this group total. Ah. Yes, and then we click OK. So we have group total here. Saving up high, let's have a look at what we've done. Yes, so let's have a preview. So now we have uh, we have the group total in the, see I ran it too fast again. 
just be a little bit more patient. So now we have the group total. To yeah, it actually was working, sorry. Uh, we have the group total here on the lines. So the lines are the, uh, uh, are the orange, uh, orange ones. I usually make the lines hot pink. That's why I got confused. So yes, so the uh, group total is here on the lines, the group total here, group total here, and then the overall total here. So that's what you can do. Uh, but what if I then have a, uh, a group or a, um, a, a or Taplix that's filtered? So let's see if I have this filtered. So I'm going to go back to this, and I'm going to have a look at this table here. Boom. I'm going to go to the visibility. Sorry, filters. I'm going to add a filter. And I'm going to say I want to do this on the first number. I want to do between. Boom. And let's say 10,000 10, to 20,000. So OK. And save and compile. So now, I really haven't done any uh, total on the uh, on the tablets yet, but let's just see what's uh, what's going on here. So now I only should only have uh, did I not do it right? Did I do something wrong? Filter, yes, yes, yes. Save. Oh, I didn't get back. Okay, sorry about that. Yes. And preview. Uh, and now I only see the customers uh, 10,000 and 20,000. That's the only thing I see now. Uh, and if I then want to, unless I want to uh, see the total of that, I could also say I actually want to see the total of that scope. So if I set a column to the right, so I want to put here, let's just take a copy of this one here, Control C and Control V, and you go in here and you say take expression, and instead of data set result, what do you, what do, you do? Well, what you do is that you take the uh, scope of the table, and if you have the document outline, if you are uh, working with Visual Studio, you have the document outline open over here to the left, and you can see uh, the hierarchy of how your report is being built up. You can see that you're now, this is called the Tablix 1, so you write Tablix 1 here, and then say OK. And this is not the overall total anymore, this is the overall uh, Tablix total. So, yes. Okay. Save and back and save and compile. One, two, three, four. Hopefully it's okay now. And we run preview. And now we have the uh, total for the uh, for the tablets. We have the total for the data set. We have the total for the group. And you can of course play with all these. So you can get get from you can always go from inside the group or go to the level uh, higher and higher and higher. You can do that, but of course you cannot go in uh, and do this. Okay, let's uh, let's park this one now. Unless there are some questions. Uh, so, so the question was if we could do totals per month per. Multiple, multiple tables. If we do some so that, uh, yes, uh, you could do that. So, uh, but the, the, let me actually answer that question by going to the next exercise because uh, then I can I, I can show it to you. Uh, so uh, that's a little trick to this. So uh, let me just close this one down, and I'm gonna go in here. And let's just close down Visual Studio also. If anybody has read my blog, I really encourage you when you're sitting and designing reports, I really encourage you not to close down Visual Studio. Because you can always undo, always undo. And if you close down Visual Studio, you're shooting yourself in the foot. I think I've said this many, many times. I also said it last year uh, at this session here. So, but please keep Visual Studio open as much as possible because you can always undo the things that you have done. And undoing things, and on developing things, well, you uh, make the call of what is fastest. So let me answer that question first uh, that you had. Because in this, uh, in this designer here, I don't have a data items and indenter in uh, the uh, customer. Here I have two tables that are completely uh, uh, independent of each other. So they are same level. That's kind of the scenario you're thinking about, correct? I can see you're nodding, yes? Uh, let's not do any sums here, uh, but let's do something else. Uh, let's do um, 
Let's go in here and put in a text constant. I'll just call this cost. And I'll call this customer. And I want here, I'll call the vendor. And then the vendor. Yes. So compile. Uh, actually, I want to have it in here. So let's uh, put up the customer here. And just give it a name so I can use it on Visual Studio. And then I have vendor here. Uh, open up a simple menu and the vendor here. So save and compile. And then we're going to go open up the Visual Studio. And in here within, I'm looking for something to drink here. Uh, we have our data set. Uh, actually, we need to look at the data set first. Yeah, exactly. No, let's not uh, get too carried away here because this is important. I'm going to preview, and then we're going to go to the help, and we're going to bounce this report, and we're going to go to Excel, and let's get rid of this one, running modal, and Excel. Okay, so now I have uh, two, uh, two tables, but they are completely uh, independent of each other, so I have a table that's running here, so going through all my customers, and then when the customers are done, all my, my, my vendors are, are here. So I have in the, uh, in the object designer, I have two tables that are on top of each other, but then in Excel, it's completely uh, separate from each other. So you're actually trying to do some of the, some things that are completely separate from each other. Yes, but let me show you a trick. You could, of course, do this in, a, uh, in NME, uh, but that's, uh, did anyone say anything? Yes? So if you wanted to use labels instead of text constants, uh, yes, I could have done that also, yes. You're saying the purple ones are in fact, are we talking hot pink now or what? <laughs> the performance, yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, but then we're talking about the captions. Okay, so let me answer that question also and I'll get back to you, okay? So the captions is when you're saying include caption, is include caption is, is, is a label that's coming away. It's a parameter. It's actually misusing a little bit parameters. Uh, when we did this, uh, actually I was part of the group that did, did that at Microsoft, we misused it a little bit because you know, it's not really supposed to be a parameter as such, but since nobody's changing this, uh, we could do this. Uh, so uh, oh, there was a risk that somebody would change it, but nobody's changing this for the next 25 years, so, so it was okay. Uh, so, uh, if you do it with a parameter, the caption that comes in is a caption, the language of the client that you're running, okay? So, if you want to do this, uh, with these captions, you can do this on internal reports. But you cannot do this on document reports because you might want to have this report going to Spain, to Germany, and uh, UK, and maybe also to Denmark. Don't send invoices to Denmark, but, but uh, you, and you would have to have uh, these, uh, these captions in, and, the, and then you would have to go and add these as a column, and you would have to have the captions on each row of your data set. And that is, of course, a little performance heavy. Yes. Did I answer your question? Yes? Okay. So, back to you. So what I'll do now is that I have a look at my report. And if I, op if I run my report now, uh, let's just add, insert here a table. And uh, let's just, uh, for the fun of it, just instead of moving some colors, we're going to go into the expression here. And expression, and here we're going to take the comment function, and we're going to take the miscellaneous, we've taken the row number, so I can actually get the row number also. It gives me a scope. What is the scope that I want to run this for? This is and the tablex one that I want to do this, so tablex one. Formulum, row number, yes. So now I get the row number. Let's just I'll give it a name, so row number. So, oh, so, and then we run the report. And back to the development environment. Wait a couple of seconds, run, and preview. And now it's running through my whole data set. So I have all, my, the, all the, uh, the rows that I have, and I have 136. So really I've created uh, a, a table that's, just, that's running through my whole data set. So I've not grouped this yet. Uh, so let's uh, think that now we have the whole data set in this, this table. Let's go and, uh, and play with this. So if I, I don't have a decimal in this, uh, in this uh, scenario here, but I'll give you a clue of how you do this, or tip. So go to the expression, and what you put in here in your data set, no, it's not the effect. let's actually get this, this report or this table, if 
I'll relate it to the data set. Good. I'm going to go into the expression. Boom. And then we're going to go to the fields. I'm going to take the customer number here. Uh, yeah, let's just do the customer number. That's fine. Uh, and what I'll do now is a little trick. So I put plus here. And then I take the, uh, the vendor number. So what is it I'm doing here? It's going, this is going through my whole data set. And no matter what happens, it will never be able to have the customer and the vendor at the same time. Never, because they're completely separated from each other. So I could do a sum here also on these things, if there was a number I had there. Uh, so I could put a sum around here. Yes, so let's say uh, uh, okay here. So that's just the, I don't want to put the names anymore. So just go in the expression. And here I put in the field, put in the uh, name of the customer. And now I put in the uh, name of the vendor, boom. And then just uh, do this also, so it's visible what we're doing. Computer, please work, thank you. Expression, I'm gonna go here, and then I'm gonna take this uh, customer, and plus, and vendor. And let's do some s interaction sorting on this report here then. So I say okay, boom. And I'm going to go up in this field here. I'm going to go to text properties. In the text properties, you're going to go to the interactive sorting, enable sorting. And I'm going to sort by the same expression that I just had down there. So, OK, boom, 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 boom. And if I save and compile my report, please work, computer, please. Thank you. Preview, and now I have uh, my uh, I have my customers shown, and if I go down, I have my uh, my vendors coming also, so they're coming down here. So I don't have any blank rows in this uh, in this uh, uh, table now, and if I go to the top, I can now do a filtering here, so I can sort on the customer and the vendor, and if I actually did an interactive sorting on here, let's do that also here. So take this on and do it on the name. So copy this expression here. Boom, boom, boom. Go up here, text box. Interactive sorting, enable interactive sorting, expression, and come on, computer work for me. Thank you. Say okay. Save. And Save and compile, wait for a couple of seconds, and then run the report. Then I go preview. And then now I can now uh, sort here, and now I can, I can mix things together. So, uh, so now I've alphabetic, the, uh, alphabetic ordered the customers and vendors. Uh, so uh, as I said the other day, you now have uh, your list of the uh, Christmas, Christmas cards. So. So do you understand? Do you understand? You could do some like this. Do you understand? Yes. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Okay. So so that's one way to do it in other ways also. Um, so what I want to now show you the way that you actually should create document reports because document reports is I uh, have to say is a bit a bit of struggle. Uh, it's probably also why you're all sitting here. Um, the way that are the CV ports work, or actually the report viewer is working, actually it is the CV ports, is that at first, first of all, the NAV team is a little bit, or oh, it's actually also or it's part of that team. Uh, so uh, sometimes when you point, you have three fingers pointing at yourself. Sometimes you know that. Uh, so what we what actually did was we uh, we created one big data set. It's not really nice. Uh, because the way that Visual Studio, or actually it was actually the SQL Server team that created this RDL, not the Visual Studio team. The Visual Studio team came afterwards and then created the RDLC so we could embed our reports into our, uh, inside our application. But we did was if we created one uh, huge data set. So if I have, uh, let's say, 300 invoices uh, that, I want to, that I want to print, I have all these 300 invoices in one big data set. And that's not really what uh, the guys uh, from the SSAs team had thought that this was something that people would do. Uh, why would you do something that crazy, something like that? Well, that's what we did in the NAV team. Uh, so, um, 
if anybody from Microsoft is listening to here or here, it would be really nice if we could get a friend engine so we could do it on groups instead so we don't have to have a huge data set. Okay. And call me if you want to have that elaborated because that would solve so many things for us without a CV force. But we have this huge data set and the way that it's working is that it goes through all of the, uh, the body of these reports. And when it goes through the body of the report, then it will do the page setter for all of them and the page footer uh, for all of them. You would think as a human, it would say, ah, it's taking page setter, body, page footer. No, that's not how it's working, unfortunately. It's working like that because it needs to know how many page number there is. It has to calculate all the page numbers first, and then it does the page setter and page, uh, page uh, footer afterwards. And then one of the reasons um, we also only can do the page number on the page setter and the page footer. Kind of one of the things that I, that I hate most uh, about IDC reports. That I can't do and put the page number where I want to have it in the body, but I, can, I have to have it in the page, uh, page setter or page footer. So when we do it like this, so we then run through the body, uh, the page setter doesn't necessarily know. Uh, you, can always, uh, you can always get to the first and you can get to the last. But you can as not iterate. You cannot do a table in a page setter. And you cannot do a table in the uh, page footer either. As you can do a text box and you can do a rectangle. Uh, and I think also you can do a line. That's about it. So you can only get to the first and the last in your data set, in your page setter. But you have 400 uh, invoices or 300 invoices in your, in your data set. So you can get to the first and you can get to the last. So we have to do some logic to get the uh, to, to to get the uh, each of these uh, uh, information, the customer address, for example, on each of these uh, uh, each of these uh, bodies. Uh, sorry, of each of these invoices that we have, for example. So we take the uh, we go to page number two. Well, that's another customer from what we had on uh, on page number one. And then this customer, we need to we need to uh, create a variable and store that. And then we have all this crazy code get data and set data. Uh, so really, what I do is I don't use any page headers in my reports. Uh, I and people say, oh, can you do that? Yeah, you can do that. Uh, is it complicated? No, it's actually easy. Easy to do. Uh, can you show me how it works? Yes, of course I can do that. So here I have a report where I have done this. So I'm previewing this report and uh, I've done some other things to this report also. Uh, and this is just a report that's being grouped on the, uh, um, everything's done in the, uh, in, the uh, tab in one tablet and then I have some groups inside this, in this tablet. If I do it this way, and avoid doing a page setter because I know the page setter is something that is running very late in the game, and I can't do, I can't work with the uh, with this. This is just uh, too complicated when I do my uh, my document report. So I rather want to do that. Uh, I just when, when I create my report, it's like this is the part I want to have repeated on all pages. Uh, this part actually, mm, I don't want to have this on all pages. And this one here, I want to have repeated on all pages. So you have suddenly you could do dynamic things on your page setters. Does anyone of your customers request this? No? Yes, yeah, exactly. They're always requesting this. And then you're saying to them, well, RDC has a page header and it's 10 centimeters uh, in, 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 in height, and I cannot change this because this is dynamic. Not, not, not dynamic, this is this hard, not hard coded, but it's like a fixed size. So I cannot change this. It is 10 centimeters, and it's 10 centimeters on all your pages. That's crazy. So, and the, the result of this, why do we get into this situation? Well, we get into the situation because we are adding multiple tablexes to our page. So we create a tablex, tablex has a header, it has a, a detail row, we place another tablex, we place another tablex, and we place another tablex. And we then uh, work with our report, and then uh, we say, I actually want to have something repeated. Okay, so you put on the first tablet on the top, you put uh, that this row should be repeated, and then you run your report, ah, it's working, great. But then suddenly you go down, and the next tablet starts. And report viewer is now, okay, the, next, the, the, the first tablet is, uh, is, uh, is done rendering, so uh, let's throw that away, and then move to the top again for the next tablet. And, and then suddenly you say, oh, it's not repeating this. But that I had on my first tablet, no, because you're doing multiple tablets, you're forcing yourself 
to create a page setter when you do this. So if you see a report that has a list and has, well, it basically it has a list, you're doing it wrong in my eyes, okay? So a list, no, don't do it, because if you do this, you will get into, you are forcing yourself to create a page setter. And when you create a page setter, you get into this scenario where you have to, to set variables uh, in a box that is hidden in a corner, and you have to have 55 fields that you have to go and, 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 and look at, and in the, uh, in the top of the report it says code get data one, comma one, and the code get data uh, six, comma one, and so forth. And it's just a waste of time, if you ask me. There's a problem with my design. Page number. Because the customer will say, I would like to have the page number here. Okay, yes. But you will not have that. You can have it in the top, and the uh, top left, top right, uh, the bottom right, or, or uh, bottom left, or bottom, uh, bottom right. That's where you can have it. You get it for free. Yeah, I would like to have it here. Yeah, there's no problem. For each one centimeter we go down, there's 100,000 euro. Okay, then we can then we do that. Because you're ruining my design. And I don't really want to talk about this page, page number. Okay, just get rid of it. It's just put it in, in these corners. The page number is not important. And if you put that, is it how important is How much money do you want to pay for this page number? Come on, it's a page number. It just has to be somewhere on the page. So yes, it's breaking. Uh, this is it's not working because the RDC. So I have the page number down here. This is where I have my page, page number. So I don't want to discuss that. Um, and that's, of course, uh, would be nice if I could uh, put, it into the, uh, put it into the body of the report. I could put it in the body of the report, but then I start needing to count the rows in the report, and then it gets really, really ugly. Uh, but of course, if you're in this situation, you, this is an option that you, you can do, and then you spend a lot of time on that. Okay, so what do I do? Let's just delete this part here, uh, because we did this. So I'm going to go in and put a table here. And now I'm going to build up my, my report the way uh, that, uh, that I suggested you do this. I think I created a video actually on YouTube that you can find this also. So we have a, uh, we have a group here. You go to uh, the ad group, and now I'm not going to go parent or child. I'm actually going to go adjacent after. And then I'm not just going to group it or anything. I'm just going to put C1 here, so this is a child. And I'm going to go AK, and I'm going to delete this part up here. This is not something I need right now. So now I just have a group that I have called group one. Let's just rename this. And uh, so we get this, this uh, child one and say OK. So now I have this child. So what I'll do now is uh, come on. Thank you. So now I'm going to create a parent for this. So let's create a parent. And then I just click these group header and group footer. I will like that. Uh, and then let's go into the group properties here, and it's called this parent also. Boom, and uh, boom, boom. So then you go in here and the, for the child group, and you add another child group, which is on the same level, so you go adjacent after, and let's just put C2 here. And what you then do is you go to group properties here, and, and C2, and you say okay. So. This is your structure of the repo and say, uh, what about the details? Yes, let's put in details also. So add group, you say child group, and you show, show detailed data. Actually, I'm gonna, before I do that, I'm gonna click this and delete this column, because I don't need it. So go into the add group, go child group, and notice that I click show detailed data. I'm not gonna put anything here. So, so click okay. Now I get this bloody column again. Let's get rid of that. Say just delete the column only. Yes, fine. So now I have my group here, which is this group here. This is my child one, and this is my child two. So let's get the detailed data also there. And let's get rid of this bloody column that Visual Studio keeps doing for us. Uh, if anybody finds a way for to, to, to disable that so it's not doing that by, by uh, default, uh, please tell me, and I even I'll invite you to a nice dinner in Denmark, because I really hate that. Uh, so now, actually, what you have in front of you is the skeleton for a document report. you do everything inside this group and what you do here instead of doing tab fixes you do child groups and then you can filter these child groups and say this is the subset of the data set this group can see this is a subset of the data set that this group can see 
just like we're doing on Taplexes, because what we're doing is that we have this humongous data set that we don't necessarily want to show in all the areas of our report. Okay. So let's uh, work a little bit with this. So actually what I want, I want to go and make some colors. Surprise. Sorry about that. Uh, come on, Mr. Studio. I, I don't know what's going on here, but they, I, I don't know how they did this. So no matter what I do, I, when I'm standing over to the left side of my report, so I'm standing over here, and I need a property over here, it's never the property that I need that is visible. I don't know how they did this, but it's really great. It's, this good logic, uh, I had a, this is just amazing. I don't know how, that's, uh, how they did this. But uh, now I've made it a little bit bigger. So let's uh, take green, and let's go here, and we'll go, let's go with the blue, and then we'll take the detail row, and yes, hot pink, surprise. Uh, we get the group header here for this, uh, child group, uh, let's take yellow. And then we have the detail row. Uh, we can't do yellow again, let's do gray. And then we have here uh, the bottom group uh, footer, and then let's take this one here. So now we have a lot of nice colors. So let's go and save this report and get the data set, or get the XML into the report itself. I say OK, and then we run the report. So preview. So this report is not working yet. Uh, so what we have now is that I not, haven't done any rows here. Let's go to the print layout. So we can see that I have a lot of uh, hot pinks, and we go I would go down. If I put in the row numbers here, actually, what I would have, I would have 130. Was it 134 uh, rows that I have in my data set? So I have 134 uh, hot pinks uh, uh, here, and 134 of these. So I want to filter these. So what I do is I go to the group, and what I then do is I go into the uh, to the group here. I say group properties. And then I go filter, and add a filter. The way I'm doing filters, uh, yeah, um, I've written a blog about this, but it's just uh, very shortly. Uh, so I always convert a string. Uh, so then I do a uh, length, and then I put in the field that I need. Ah, still, this needs to be linked to the, this, the data set name. Thank you. So I'm going into the group again, group properties. Going to the filter, going add. Am I going too slow? Okay, good. Uh, then go to the expression. Come on, thank you, computer. And we take the data set, so we take the uh, customer number, and we do like this. So why do I convert it to a string? Well, I convert it to a string because then I can, I don't have to bother about this one over here. If you want to bother about that one, that's fine. Uh, but if you do this in Visual Studio 2013, which is, sorry, Visual Studio 2010, which is a version that's supported in, in 2013, be careful because there's a bug there. Uh, so, uh, and it will, if you have put integer and you look, go into the expression, it will automatically change it to text. If somebody goes in and looks at what you have done. So be careful with that. Then uh, I will say, just lay larger than zero. And I like to use the length. Uh, so um, I've done that. So now I filter that. So let's just put in the row number on this one. Come on, computer. Don't do this to me. Come on. So short break for this uh, little uh, computer here. Uh, let's go to the expression, and it's just going to put in the row number here. So common function, miscellaneous, uh, row number, and we're going to put in the scope. So let's just put in, uh, should we put in the scope of the group? Let's just do that. So that's uh, C1. So let's just put that in, go away. So C1, it's always the name that we do this on scope on. So let's see if that works. Save, compile. And we run. And we then uh, preview the report. So I go and look at my data sets. Let's just go make this a little bit bigger. So let's do uh, not 500%, but 200%. And we go to the next page, next page, next page. And you'll notice that I now have 136 uh, s rows here in my data set. So my filter's not working. 
So if you ask me, what we're looking at right now is a bug, uh, unless somebody can explain me why uh, this is not working, uh, then then it's fine. Uh, but I don't have anybody can who can explain me that. Uh, so what uh, what is what is the problem is that I actually filter this this group. And I, in this group, I only want to see the customers because I was filtering on the filtering on the customer number. Okay, so only want to see the customers there. So filter not working. So what's going on? So uh, some of these things that you 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 are spending time on, you're thinking what's what's going on here. Uh, so it will take you some time to figure out if unless somebody tells you, well, the filter on the group is not working because before you have a valid group. So you cannot just put a text there, which I, which I just did. So it has to be a valid group. So what I'll do is I'm going to go into the explicit just text. I could have written anything here, right? anything. It's not being grouped by anything. So let's go to here to the expression. And I don't know why my computer is slowing down. Come on. It's time to drink something and wait. Okay, so click here, delete, boom. So I want to put in the group expression here. And what I always do is I do the following. So I'll put in a length. And I then put in the field itself, uh, where your customer number. And I'll then do different from zero. So now I've done a valid group. This is in the scope of what, what I want to show. So I say OK to this. And I then save back to NLE, wait a couple of seconds, run, and now the repo is running. And now if I just let's go back to this layout, let's go back to 200%, and then we'll go to the next page, next page, oops, so that's uh, what's actually was, it was actually working. So now I only have 68 rows in this child group. So I have now specifically told this group that you can now see this part of the data set. So I'm going to do exactly the same on the next, uh, on the next uh, group also. And then this can see the specific rows also there. This way, you can do, you can mimic what uh, is done in the, uh, in the standard reports with a, a list, uh, which is forcing yourself to do a, a, a page setter, and you can have everything uh, inside a one tablet, and you have full control of, the, of what's going on at the top. And you can have one row that's shown, one row that's not shown, and one row that's shown, and one row that's not shown, and so forth. It's just a matter of your imagination and the customer's imagination of what you want to have there. So uh, let me uh, show you. Let me just finish this one here. So let's go down to this one. This group here, this is a vendor's group. Let's uh, just put in the row number. Let's take a copy of this one here and then go here. Uh, let's make this uh, light gray also. It is light gray. Why is it saying that? Okay. So let's say light gray. So this one. And when you do a copy, notice that, be careful with that. Visual Studio finds it very funny to, to delete what you actually had in your expression. I don't know why that's happening, uh, but it's a, uh, oh, this is too complicated, just, just delete things. Okay, thanks. Uh, so we want to put in the, uh, the, row no the, the, the row number here, the scope again. So in this case here, let's put just C2. So, yes. Uh, and another thing is actually, if I, let's show you something. If I go here, and you, uh, let's say I put some row visibility here. So actually this is uh, based on, let's what, just put whatever, just put true here, whatever. And then we'll say okay. And then you say okay. And you go into this uh, line here. If, and you wait again for the computer to wake up. This is a very well tested uh, uh, scenario. Uh, a lot of people at Microsoft is testing this. <coughs> yes. Um, so I'm going to go in here. And I'm going to uh, now also do a row visibility here for this one here. So no row visibility. Ah, that's fair enough. You remember I do the row visibility on this one, right? Do you remember that? Yeah, OK. So let's have a look. Row visibility. Gone. OK, so be careful with that also. Uh, so uh, and this is a little bit tricky also. So um, yeah, you have to hold your horses. 
uh, another thing is also is if you have this expression, just say take the expression, and I already did this, and I pasted it over here, so yeah, that's possible. But let's imagine there's some custom code in this one here. There's already some custom code in the report that, uh, that uh, Microsoft is coming with. They have some public functions here, so the font blank zero and so forth. So we could just take this blank zero, for example, and it's not really valid the case, but let's go in here expression. And I think all of you probably know this, but let's, if you don't, this is a small trick. So I put here code, and then I put in the uh, blank zero, and then parenthesis the end here. So I put a, uh, Actually, where was it? Blanks. Ah, here it is, sorry. Uh, here. And sorry about that. So now I have that. So I'll see how case with this. And now this text box I want to copy. And I want to copy it over here and I get this button. I get this one here. Repo builder is unable to successfully copy this text box. Okay, thank you for nothing. <laughs> Why is this not possible? Well, uh, if you if you think the logical uh, reason for not being able to copy this is that you actually need to have a comment here, okay? So you put a comment here, and then you take the uh, text box, and then you can copy it, okay? It's really strange. So. Yes, you like that one? Yes, really strange. Uh, so, uh, and this is, uh, if, if you go and look at MS Connect, uh, there's probably about 250 people saying, oh, this is a problem, and you know why we can't copy things, and I was like, yeah, and then there's uh, a guy or a girl or whatever uh, on, the, on this MS Connect, yeah, we're we going to build it, we're going to solve this in the next version. Okay, which version? There is no version. <laughs> so, stop promising something you're not doing. So, okay. Uh, what I want to show you a little bit here also, because I also run into another bug here. And the problem I have here is that uh, I'm running into an issue because I want to have, let's say I want to have this row here repeated and I want to have this row repeated. Unfortunately, when I deleted the columns that I actually didn't want Visual Studio to, to, to create in the, in the first place, well, it, that actually did not clean up after itself. Unfortunately. So if I go into advanced mode, this is a really advanced thing. So if I go into the, uh, to this uh, row here, I have to go advanced mode, and I can see down here that I have a problem. Um, experienced people, of course, but you might not be able to see this if you're not playing around with this, but I have a problem here. So have a look at the static row here, and notice that I have now, uh, it's actually very helpful. So I click this group here, and as I have a, on the first column, I can have a, this is marked, so I can see, this is the, uh, the group that, is, uh, that this is in. This is a parent group. And I click on the child group. Well, this is this area here. And I look at the, click on the other child group. And this is this area here. So it's kind of, this is just kind of helping you right, uh, uh, quite a lot here. It's very nice, actually. Uh, I like that. So go to the static row. Well, this is the static row. Uh, a static row is, of course, not a row that's uh, iterating through your data set. It's just uh, shows what you have uh, printed in there. The static rows can get uh, the first and the last part of your uh, th of the scope that you're in right now, uh, but it cannot do any iterations. Of course, if it's in a group, it can. <sighs> okay, so we have um, the this static row here, so I can see that this static fine, but when I click this static row, it's going down to my detail row. So what's going on here? Well. This is a problem, and you need to solve this. And there's an easy solution for this. It's really easy to do. Uh, you open up uh, the, uh, the uh, designer here. You open it up in XML view. Uh, so you go and open with, you just save first, and you open up a XML editor, and then you locate the place where you need to solve this, okay? So this is quite easy to do. So let's go, and uh, I hope you understand the irony I have here. So delete me. So put this, delete me. So I'm gonna go save. I'm gonna go to the, I also wrote a blog about this, by the way. So go to XML text editor, and I'm gonna search for delete me. No, I didn't do A, so just do this, do it like this, delete me. So here I have it. And then uh, what I have, I also had some visibility, so great. So this is uh, um, even more easy to know exactly what I need to delete. So this is the, uh, I need to the Tabflex member, the Tabflex members, the visibility property on this one also, and the data element name. So let's get rid of that one. And I'm going to get rid of these two also. Boom. 
So quite easy to do. Everybody can do this. I know exactly what they do. If you start playing around with this, you can, in the designer, undo things. So you go back to the, uh, to the viewport IDC designer here, and what do you notice here now? The properties are gone. So what do you do to my properties? Well, actually, Klaus, what you need to do, you have to go back to the viewport IDC, and you have to go back to the design, and then the properties will come sometimes. So, let's see, no? What's going on? Ah, oh, now the problems are there. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, so, uh, so now what I've done is, I, and also I've gone out of the advanced mode, so everything is like kind of reset. So let's go back to the advanced mode, and I can now see that the static row is correct, static row here, and I can, uh, I still have the problem down here, so this static row is still wrong. So be careful with this. If you don't care about repeating any of these rows, if the customer say, ah, I would like to have when this group is running, I would actually have to like to have the, the caption being repeated on all pages. Where's the edit? Quest. And you can spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours trying to figure out what the hell is wrong here if you don't understand that Visual Studio created a static row. It didn't leave, took away the static row when I deleted the column. Okay? So what is the problem when I don't remove the line? I, the problem, oh, I can try to do it. Uh, I could put in the, let's say I want to repeat this row. So uh, let's say I want to repeat this row. So I go to static, and I go to the Tablix member here, and I go and say, keep it group, uh, and I say, actually I don't, yeah, keep it group, that's fine. Uh, I said this uh, several times, I, I don't know all have heard this, but uh, uh, keep it group before, uh, don't play with this because it's not working. Um, so uh, I always use co uh, the keep a group after. Keep a group after, I have not found any box in. It's working all the time. So if you find a box, please tell me. I have not found any box here. So, but uh, keep it group bef uh, with before is not working. So keep your hands away from that. Uh, if it's working in your scenario, beautiful. Uh, but there might be some corner cases you, that you have not tested in your report. So be careful. Before is, is, a, is a very buggy area. Uh, so that's uh, the small little warning. So what I've done here is now I've just done static row here. So I want to uh, repeat this. This is uh, repeat on new page. So I say yes. And let's do the same thing on this one up here. So I go uh, keep it group. And I keep it group after. And then I repeat on new page. So what we'll do now, this, this row here, the, uh, the light blue here, or whatever color it is, it will, this will be repeated. But the yellow here will not be repeated. You will think it will be repeated because you did exactly the same thing, but you have this little problem here that's, that's, that's blocking you from doing it. So let's uh, save and uh, compile and compile and then run. And then you go here and then you go preview. And let's have a look. So I'm expecting the, not the green one, I'm expecting to go away because I didn't ask this to be repeated. I could actually have, been, uh, have repeated this on all pages because it's a, uh, above this, as I remember. No, it's actually, if I create another row um, above that, I could repeat this on all pages. Let's just do that for a second. Give me a second. Uh, um, how much time do I have left? 10 minutes? 15 minutes? Yeah, you remember I have to catch a plane, right? So is that including me running out of the door? Ah, come on, just the right color, Klaus. So... And now I'm going to set this uh, static row here. I'm going to set this to also to repeat on all pages. So, yes, run, run, preview, boom, boom, boom. and then we're going to go here, boom, and then I'm going to go to the uh, next page. So I'm actually expecting the uh, the kind of the purple one on top. I want that to be repeated. The green one will disappear, and the uh, light blue here will keep on going. So, as I said, expected. Now I'm getting to the next page here. So I'm ex expecting the yellow here not to be repeated. So I'm going here, and it's not working. Okay. Then you can start, uh, you know, sit there and you try to put it in, and you get errors. And so you say, let's let's put this static row here. You say, keep it group after. You say, ah, why? And you think oh, I should actually do that here also. You say true, and you go here and you build, 
and it is now saying you, can, you have a grouping member uh, that is, uh, yeah, you cannot do keep a group on a property, so you have to set it to none. But I don't want to set it to none. I want to keep it, uh, I want to have it there. And then you're struggling with this one here, so you just have to get rid of it to, for this to work. Okay, so uh, any final questions? Because I am I'm out of here soon, guys. But I want to just uh, want to give you a little hint because if you want to know more, uh, there is uh, I'm doing some training uh, in this report. So I'm doing it next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday next week. I will also do training in uh, in Belgium in December, and I'll do training in in Holland also. So if you want to. Uh, yeah, if you want to go there, uh, I think it's a good idea for you to uh, to go there if you want to be exper experts in RDSC reports. If you attend my three days training, I always give people uh, free support for things that I did not tell you in these three days. Okay, I know what I told you. So if you come back and you ask me, uh, you can always uh, you can always come back to me and say, "Oh, Klaus, you didn't tell me about this." No, I didn't tell me. Okay, let me help you. Okay. Uh, and magically what happens is that if somebody comes to me with this request, my next training, of course, I'm going to tell you about this, okay? Yes, so uh, I have, as I said, been training of around 900 people in the channel. There are other tools available for you. You've probably seen this on, the, uh, on here in this conference. There's a tool from IDEN and there's a tool from App. People are coming up to me, oh, what do you think about these tools? It looks very promising, okay? I suggest you check these tools out. It looks very promising. Unfortunately, it's not something Microsoft is doing. But Microsoft's not doing anything. So kind of, you know, this is the other CB force we have. So I really suggest you have a look at the, uh, see the, these tools. Uh, the guys from IDEN, what they did was they created the designer, uh, so a great designer, and then uh, they attacked the upgrade. Uh, while Farnav started with the upgrade, uh, and it's doing a 100% uh, upgrade, or at least that's what they're claiming. They're doing a 100% uh, from classic to uh, not the RDC part, but their reports. Uh, the uh, Island guys are also claiming this, uh, and I've not been in the, uh, in the position where I have the possibility to go in and claim other uh, than what they're saying. Uh, so uh, Farnav guys uh, is uh, working hard on the designer. Uh, so, uh, so the designer in Island, uh, from my point of view, looks a little bit better right now. Uh, uh, but on the other hand, for NAV, uh, the upgrade uh, of the reports well, might be a little bit better also. So, and then they have a di different price model. So where Iden is, uh, as I understand it, is uh, it's uh, they have more cost on the partner, uh, where for NAV there's more cost on the, par on, the, on the customer. So there's different price model. So I'm not going to go and recommend any of these tools, even though people are requesting me to do this all the time. Uh, I'm not doing that, uh, but uh, uh, yeah. So go look at these tools. This is what I recommend. This is my recommendation. There's other tools in the market also, uh, but uh, these are kind of the, the, the uh, rising stars uh, that we you might want to look at. Okay, so any questions that I missed? Uh, one question actually for me. Did you get anything out of this session? Hands up. Okay, thanks, guys. Okay. Any questions? I have two t-shirts. If no questions, I'll keep them myself. So you already asked a question, so you don't count. <laughs> yes. Yes. So you have a microphone. I can also repeat the question, but uh, yes. When you, have a, when you add a group, you've got the um, include header date. Uh, see, yeah, I, I cannot, I cannot hear you. But but all, yeah, all of us can hear you, but I cannot hear you, so. <laughs> when so. you add a group, um, you've got the boxes for add he header and footer lines. If you forget to tick them, is there any way to get those headers? And yes. Back uh, on? Yes. Uh, <laughs> especially if you have, uh, if you have not removed your uh, the column that, that the kind of the vertical text box that you have, you're gonna right click on the detail row and you're gonna click at group total. So group total, and then you get it. I can very shortly show you ah, T-shirt, and then I'm out of here. So. Show you in a second, and then. <laughs> so what you do is, you are in this situation. Let's go back on this report here. Oh, go away, go away. 
So uh, we're here, 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 here. Go back, go back, go back. Come on, go back, go back, go back, go back. I, I closed numbers, I don't know what's going on here. Let's just delete everything. And we'll go here. We're going to insert a table. Boom. We're going to go to the row group. And I'm going to go to the details, add group, parent group, group this on, whatever. Just, uh, just whatever. Just this. And you don't check mark this. But I said you check mark this, but you did not check mark this, for example. So now you're in the situation you want to have that. You then right click. You said insert above. It will not do this. This is your problem, right? So what you actually do is you go here, and I believe it is, oh, where is it? Uh, it's actually on the group down here, here. You go to add total, and you say it before. Ah, come on. Here, add, uh, add total before, and then you get it, okay? So add total, that's how you get it in. One more t-shirt, and then I need to catch a plane. You, what's your name? Okay, hello, Dominic. I'm Klaus. Is it possible to uh, put uh, transfers yes. and group footers uh, yes. to the bottom uh, yes. of the page? Yes. I love transfers and transfers. This is yeah, a well, uh, favorite topic of mine. I've written four blogs about this topic. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and they have reports uh, on the uh, on my OneDrive where you can find these things. Uh, you're probably asking, where's your OneDrive? Let me show you that. So my blog is Mibuzo. Mibuzo. Uh, actually, they, they, they Mibuzo decided not to have blogs anymore. So I have a lot of work to do now, unfortunately. So Mibuzo.com. Uh, Blocks, uh, Klaus L. And it should go to, ah, uh, I'm not on the internet. Give me a second. Okay. Mibuzo.com, uh, blocks, Klaus L. This is my blog. And when you go into this blog, then you search for OneDrive. In OneDrive, you have access to, actually this there. Let's see. Yes, so here it is. You search for OneDrive, OneDrive, because I like to do give examples. Search for OneDrive. Come on. Uh, and then click here. Surprise, it's a transitor, transfer uh, scenario. You go on my OneDrive here, and then in here you can navigate up. You go to the R2, you go to public, and you have a huge amount of, uh, uh, of uh, examples that are put in here. I've not blocked about all these things here. It's just a lot of, a lot of reports yeah, you, can, you can find and you can play with. So I need to catch a plane. So really, thank you very, uh, thank you very much for being here. So, thanks, guys.